Hi, welcome to Crafting with Kimberly. Today, we're going to play with paper, specifically making paper beads. These are really fun, as you can see. There's lots of different shapes that you can make. They are super light. You can turn them into necklaces. You can turn them into earrings adding other beads to them. Really easy. You can use a ton of different materials. That's what I love about paper beads. Basically, nothing goes to waste anymore. You can use old wrapping paper, magazines, junk mail. This is the best one. You can use junk mail. We all get it. There's a ton of it opening it up you can have you can open this all the way use the envelope you can use the pieces of paper that it comes with this particular one comes with some great glossy paper these are going to make great beads the nice thing about the junk mail is specifically this isn't very attractive but you can take your markers, you can take your paints and paint on them. Whenever I paint, I always keep my work surface covered. And I usually put down just a big piece of paper like this. So then as I paint, I get things all over. I wipe my brush on them. These will make some really cool paper beads as we're going along. So you'll always have paper that way. Also, when I paint, what I do is instead of dipping my paintbrush into the water right away to rinse it off, I will just take pieces of paper and I will wipe it off as I'm going along. And this, you know, may not look great singly, but when you roll it up as a paper bead, that's going to be great. You know, little little pieces here and there. I've cut them up. Sometimes I've had a lot of paint left over, so instead of wasting it, if I can't get it back it, to go back into the bottle, I'll just draw some little patterns like this with uh, coordinating colors. That makes a nice layout. You never know what you're going to need to cut shapes out of, so um, it's a great way to get a great stash of scrapbook paper it uses up your materials so they're not going to waste. You know, they're not always that pretty. And the colors don't always mix well, but when you're, using, when you're using them for paper beads, they're fantastic. This is just a small one that I've started. I'll just keep adding paint to it as I go along. Sometimes I just have a lot of one color left. This is great when you want a monochrome bead. So lots of different things you can do with the scrap papers. Um, magazines are great when they come. Flyers, junk mail flyers, uh, catalogs. You know, any little magazines you see free laying around that you, can, that you can pick up. Any of your subscriptions that you have. So magazines make fantastic pieces of paper. Um, brown paper bags. We're now no longer in New York using plastic bags, so... We all have a lot of uh, brown paper bags laying around, and some of them aren't that good. I know like the Dollar Tree, they're really thin now, so they have a tendency to rip, but if they rip, you've got a whole bunch of great paper that you can use from those. Um, like I said, any kinds of magazines. Copy paper is great. Buy yourself a ream of copy paper and use that. That makes some great beads. The nice thing with that, with copy paper and with newspapers, if you still get a hard newspaper, save it and cut those up into strips. What's nice about those is you can make basic just barrel beads. These are just a basic tube or barrel bead. So you have a nice base with your bead. And then you can take your scrap paper and, and put it on top of that so you're not using so much of your good paper. And 
paper comes in tons of different kinds of pads. You can get almost basically any theme that you can think of. Lots of those. Some papers are better to use than others. Anything with like an all over pattern, that's great. Stripes are great. Uh, like these all over polka dots, that's gonna be a great bead. I, I actually, I'm going to be using this as my example. So this kind of has different colors, gradients, lines, something like that. You know, anything with, you know, bright all over patterns. Those will work great. Stripes are really fun. You'll see a lot of differences with stripes. Something that you want to avoid. Anything with like a big picture in the middle. This isn't going to work well and something like this isn't going to work well. And the reason why, you may say, but why? That's, that's fantastic. Well, the only part that's actually... Remember, you're going to a tip. So you're really looking at the edges. All of this pattern is gonna be gone. So you'll have mainly this black showing, maybe a little bit of striping if you're cutting here in the middle, but save this for a different project. Same thing with this. This little area might make a nice bead, but you're going all the way down to the tip. So the bottom of your bead is going to be all pink there and there, unless you cut it smaller and then you'll have that little area, but then you've kind of wasted all of this. So again, save your big pictures for a different project. Makes it much easier. These are some examples of all the different kinds of beads that you can make. These are a cone bead, and I'm gonna bring those real close. You can somewhat see the difference. This is a matte finish. This is a glossy finish, the Mod Podge with the gloss. You can see how shiny that is versus how matte. Still has a little bit of shine to it, but it's not as shiny. So your um, what you would like to coat it with does make a difference. If you want them really glossy, almost having the look of glass, then you definitely want to get a high gloss Mod Podge or sealer. If you don't mind, you just really kind of want the paper to shine through, then you're going to want to just use a mat. That's fine. You can make your own Mod Podge by using glue and water. Um, you can go either 50-50 or maybe um, three parts water, one part glue. It depends on the consistency you want. So you just want to play around with it. There's really no set recipe for that. But there are cone beads. There are hourglass, barbell, all sorts of different beads. And for those of you that took the class, um, I'm going to show an extra one for the video. This is called a pillow bead. See how it's it's opens up? How fun is that one? I like that one. So those are pillow beads. This is a saucer bead. You can see that it's flat, kind of gives you like a flying saucer look. Those are spacer beads, or if you want it to, you know, hang, hang down, that would be what you would use those for. So all sorts of different beads. I'm going, we're going to have this at the end of the, the video. You should be able to click on this link. This is going to show you, you get your paper bead by the way of how you cut your paper. So each shape is going to give you a different bead. Like this particular shape that has prongs, almost like a almost like a tuning fork. That's going to give you what's called a three cube. A half triangle or right angle, that's going to give you your cone. Bicone is the most common bead. That's just a triangle of paper. That almost like, looks like a big elongated table that's going to give you, um, it's either called like an hourglass or a barbell because it looks like a barbell bead, a torn edge bead. So we're going to look at all different shapes and sizes of what we can do, what kind of beads we can make. One little tool that I love is toothpicks a box and a piece of styrofoam. 
this is great to be able to, once you've uh, put your Mod Podge on your beads, to be able to stack them up for them to dry. You can also just turn the box over and poke the toothpicks into the box. If you don't have styrofoam laying around, you don't even need the box. You can just use any pieces of styrofoam that come in um, any of your packaging. So those are a great tool. So you do want something to put your beads in. For class, what we had done is we had taken straws, just regular drinking straws, taken a styrofoam cup, poked holes through it, put our straw in through there, rolled our beads on the straw, and then just left them there to dry. And then you just pull them off. So straws are great to use as rollers. Chopsticks are nice. Chopsticks are different. This is more of a flat. It's not tapered all that much, but it's kind of a flatter all the way around. This is a very round one with a pointed edge. I like this one. I have a tendency to roll all of my beads first and then paint them. I really like this one because I can put it right on the end, twirl it as I'm using my brush to coat it. So that's a nice, a nice method. You can also use, just depending on how big you want your bead hole to be, use a toothpick. So if you really want a small hole that you want to string on some jewelry wire, a toothpick is a great tool to use. A paintbrush is great. All different sizes of paintbrushes. So really, the, the diameter of your hole is whatever you're rolling your bead on. So if you want a big hole, use something big to roll it on. If you want a smaller hole, use something smaller. One little trick, I'm, I'm gonna show you how to make a, a, a small little fake tool. They do sell bead rollers. If you are really gonna get into this, which I think you might because beads are addictive. They're so much fun to make. And you don't need a lot, you just need a glue stick if you wanna sit and watch TV and roll some beads. All you need is, is a glue stick to put a little glue on the end and then you can seal them all later. So it's a great thing to do while you're just sitting around if you're on um, on a trip on, in the car and you want to do something or on vacation, don't need a lot of stuff. It's a fun way to do it. So if you're really going to get into it, I would suggest getting a bead roller or a quilling tool. And basically what that is, it's, it's a piece of metal. It has a slit at the top that you can feed your paper and and a handle to be able to roll it. Well, I made my own right now out of two toothpicks and a piece of paper. And the way I did that, all I did was I took two I took two toothpicks just kind of put them together took a, a piece of paper, it doesn't matter what size you use, this was about an inch. I put them down, I put my Mod Podge down, glued those down, and then just rolled all of this around. Covered the entire piece with Mod Podge, so it's good and solid. I put Mod Podge on the end right there, as you can see, that's a nice solid end. Um, is this going to last forever? No, it won't. The, eventually, the, the toothpicks will break, probably, if I have too strong a paper in it. Um, this will stay on really well, but, you know, if it unglues, then you just put some more Mod Podge and stick it in. But it's, it's a great way to start if you think you want to do this and you just want something to help your hands a little bit. If it's too fiddly to roll with your fingers, this is a great way to do it. Again, putting two toothpicks together, and then wrapping it, glue it, wrap it with uh, another piece of paper, and it makes a great tool. And I'll be using this as we're making our beads. So you'll be able to see that in action. Kind of had an idea, and I thought, what if I took one of the really big paper clips to do a metal one, kind of like the real bead rollers, and, and made one out of that? It was a great idea. But the problem was I can't seem to get my metal to stay down as much. Maybe if I took much longer paper and brought it all the way up to there, then it would stay. But I wanted to try to do it for longer, wider beads. 
this just doesn't hold it enough and it twists, but that's still an idea. If you really wanted to make your own and you didn't want to purchase a bead roller, they're really not that expensive, but if you, I've seen them online for like $12, a couple were seven. So if you really don't want to, to buy one that way and you want to make your own so you can have multiple sizes and different ones, um, go to one of the hardware stores and get some cotter pins, C-O-T-T-E-R, cotter pins. It'll have kind of like a little circle and then two prongs coming out. Same idea, wrap it with your paper like that and then you'll have your own beading tool that way. Or like I said, if you have a quilling tool, you can use that as well. So you need something to roll your beads on. So again, whether that be chopstick, paintbrush, toothbrush, pencil, straw, whatever you'd like, get, your, get whatever you're going to use to roll it. You need your gluing mechanism. I use uh, Mod Podge, and yes, I buy the big ones. <laughs> I, go, I go through the, a lot of Mod Podge with my projects. So um, buy Mod Podge. I happen to use Matt um, most of the time. This is for most of the projects. Just get some Matt. They also do have gloss. They have glitter. Um, lots of different colors. If you use the mat, you can also sprinkle glitter on your beads as um, just before they dry, as they're drying. Um, that'll give you a glitter look there, and then you can do another layer of Mod Podge over that. Um, if you're going to do the glue, again, use maybe two parts glue, one part water, whatever. You just have to play with it. Just pour it in little bits at a time and see the consist consistency you want. I have Mod Podge in, he in here. You can see it's it's pretty thick. It's it's basically like school glue. So you kind of want the consistency of school glue. And yes, you can use um, good old fashioned Elmer's school glue. You could use just that if you didn't want to um, water it down any. You can just use this straight. It might take a little bit longer. Mod Podge dries pretty quick, so it might take a little bit longer to dry. I like to use a paintbrush. But once you use a paintbrush with Mod Podge, that's going to be your dedicated paintbrush. You're never truly going to get all the Mod Podge out of it. Um, no matter how much you, you wash it, there'll be a little bit left. So don't use your really good paintbrushes. Um, go to the Dollar Tree, get a pack of, um, you know, they have tons of different size brushes and multiple packs. So you have your choice of multiple different sizes. But either way, don't use don't use your really good ones. You can use your, your foam sponge brushes as well. And those can be rinsed out and used again. If you can get all the Mod Podge out, then they won't get too hard right away. But um, I like the paintbrush. It gives me a little bit more control. And you definitely want to have a container that has some water in it. This has Mod Podge in it already because I've I've rinsed my, my brush out and that's why it's white. But you definitely want to keep a jar of water handy because when you're not using your paintbrush you can keep it in the water and that way it is not going to dry out and they have some paper towels handy so you can wipe that off glue sticks are really nice to use um if you're especially if you don't want to seal them right away you can just start it and end it with a little bit of a glue stick if you're um someplace that you don't want to get too messy a glue stick is great to use you can also use just the straight glue stick and you're going to need a ruler a ruler is very important because for your measurements if you want your beads to be the same size if you want to make earrings and you do want them to be the same size, you're going to have to have somewhat exact measurements. They have to be relatively the same. If, if you don't care and you want, you don't care if they're organic, different shapes, um, go ahead and, and just, you know, cut a strip. It doesn't really matter, especially like for the torn edged sides too. The other thing that you can use, which is fun, is fabric. If you have little edges left over from projects that uh, I don't throw, you can see I'm a hoarder, <laughs> I'm a craft hoarder. I don't throw anything out because you never know what you're going to need it for. And I have this little piece of paper and what a great bead this is going to make. If you're a sewer and you, you do a lot with fabrics, you have these salvage edges that you usually have to cut off. But when you cut that off, it makes a really great 
fringy effect and you have some really neat fabric beads. You can even color these with markers. So anything goes really. Um, you can use just regular strips of fabric to make a fabric bead and, and you treat the fabric the same way as you would treat the paper. If you have little pieces of paper that you've cut up and you don't want to throw those out, if you see here, I have glued them together. So this was a little strip, this was a little strip, and this was a little strip. So I had three little strips, glued it together with a glue stick, now I have a big strip. You're not gonna see this. You're not gonna see where I glued it together because you're rolling it up. So this is a great way to use little odds and ends if you really wanna be frugal with your crafting. Um, toothpicks, as I said also, toothpicks are great to be able to put them on when you have them on your toothpick. I just set them right on top of each other as I'm going, as I'm gluing. So it sticks a little, but look, I can just pull that right apart. They don't, they don't stick to each other permanently. And then you have your nice little paper bead. If you want to make um, a necklace and you want to have the same kind of beads, try to look for the same paper, keep using the same paper. This was from this whole pile of beads right here. This was from a magazine and I loved the blue. So I'm going to turn that into a necklace. And you can hear they're hard after you, after you color them. So all sorts of things that you can do with them, you know, all sorts of different colors of your beads, colors, shapes, sizes, pretty much anything goes with your beads. You just have to decide what kind of what kind of shape do I want? And you almost can't make a mistake either. Like this one. If you wanted to be really specific, I'm going to look at this really closely. You can see how it bevels down here, but here it's very straight. If I really wanted them to be even, I could cut that, but I'm gonna turn this into a pendant. So I'm gonna keep the bottom part of that straight add a bead and keep the top beveled. So you can cut them if you don't want it to, um, to look that way. Another thing that you can do is if you put multiple beads together to shape pendants, you can make pendants. So I'm going to just take a piece of wire that I have. Here is a cone bead. I'm going to put, if I can see it, <laughs> I'm going to put a cone. I'm going to put a round and I'm going to put another cone going this way. I would glue those. I'm just putting them on here to show you, but I would glue those together. Put a little bit of glow inside here. Mod, glue Mod Podge, put some here, screw those together, push them together, let that dry, do the same thing to the other end, and then look at the neat pendant you can make out of that. And it doesn't even matter. You can see that none of those colors really match. I can paint this when I'm done. I can add all sorts of different um, paints or markers to it and then shellac it again at the end. So there's all just tons and tons of things that you can do. To make an earring, you could take a head pin. This is a decorative one. Take a head pin, take a coordinating color bead. I'm gonna put my cone on top of that. And then I could make my loop. If I this happened, I rolled it on a really big um, rollers. So if I don't want that big hole to show, I can take this little tiny bead, if I can find the hole, I can take this little tiny bead, put it on there, push it all the way down in. And then you can see that would be a really cool earring and then just make my loop and add it to an ear wire. So lots and lots of different things that you can do. Another example is I'm going to show you um, another great free <laughs> set of materials, paint sticks, paint strip uh, colors. These are great because then you get a really great ombre bead. This is just half of one. I took 
the other half and already kind of curled them around. The one thing I did with this one, as you can see up close, I took a gold marker and I colored in the strip in between and I just very, very lightly did the sides to give it a little bit of color. With this one, I did not. I just kept it with the lines, the white lines, the words, all of that. So, and I know I said you needed a pair of scissors and a pencil is really good too, so you can draw your lines. So I'm going to turn the camera around so you can have a good close up view of my hands and let's get started making some beads. The first bead we're going to make is the bicone bead. This is the easiest bead to make and pretty much the most common. I'm going to take a piece of my scrapbook paper. Now scrapbook paper is very heavy. It's a, it's a heavy duty paper. So the heavier your paper, the thicker and, and, and larger your bead is going to be. Um, a magazine is not going to roll up as big as a scrapbook piece of paper would be. So keep that in mind when you're choosing your papers. A ruler is basically about an inch across. It's a, the ones that I have a little bit more. So I'm going to do an, an inch wide piece of paper piece of um, bead paper. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take my ruler, I'm going to come down to the bottom, and I'm going to mark off some inch marks, because I want my, I want my bead to be an inch wide. If you want a smaller bead, make it smaller. So whatever the width of your bead that you want it to be, that's the size. So let's just start with an inch. So I'm gonna do an inch there, an inch there, and an inch there. So I've got three little tick marks. I'm going to turn this around in the same area. I'm going to do three more marks, so an inch, an inch, and an inch. The easiest way to cut a triangular piece of paper is starting at your inch mark. You're going to go from the bottom of your inch all the way to the tip of the other side. So you're not gonna go inch to inch you're going to go the width to the very tip. So I'm gonna take my ruler, I'm going to start at my inch right there. I'm gonna start at my inch, put my ruler down, but I'm going to go to the very edge of my paper. Instead of going a straight up and down inch line, I'm going to turn it in. So I'm gonna keep my ruler at the bottom and I'm gonna go all the way to the top and make a triangle. Starting at this mark where I just was, the width, this is a wide part, so now I have to make this part be a triangle. So I'm gonna start right at the very tip where I was. I'm going to come up to the other inch there and I'm going to draw my line. So you can see I have a wide line here and I have a wide line up there. So you can just keep going with that. Because I did my point on this side, this side needs to be my width. So I'm going to come over here, go up to the very tip of that, draw my line, take my ruler, fan it out because this needs to be a point, and draw a line. So 
you can so you can see how that goes you're basically making zigzags if you want to make it easier so you know exactly where you're cutting them you could cut straight up the line and basically you'll have a one inch strip You could cut one inch strips and then just go corner to corner. You can do that as well. So whatever's those, those are the two ways to do it. So whatever's easier for you. And then you're gonna cut from the corner all the way up to the top. The best thing about going on the a side that you don't want to roll on. You can see my pattern is on this side. My lines are on this side. If you don't exactly cut exactly on the line and you leave even some of the pencil marks there, it will show up on your bead, especially if it's a white bead, like if you're using white copy paper or white paper. So it's always a good idea to cut on the opposite side of where you want your bead. So I'm just going to finish cutting. I'm going to cut out these two strips. If you know you want to make a lot a, a necklace out of something and you need a lot of beads, go ahead and go ahead and cut them all out. But for my purposes right now, I just I just need two. So then this way, you have your even pieces and your beads are all going to be the same size. So to make a bicone bead, basically it looks like a diamond up at the top and bottom. So you're going to have a point here and a point there, and it's going to taper onto the sides. You're going to put the side that you want showing face down. And I'm going to show you the little tool. The one thing with this tool is because these toothpicks aren't perfectly round and because they're standing on top of each other, it almost makes a flattened oblong bead, but you can just squeeze it together to make it. You can see how this one is perfectly round because I used a straw, so it was perfectly round. So you can see the hole right there, perfectly round, perfectly round bead. I'm going to show you what it looks like if we use this. So I'm gonna put my little tool, these are my two toothpicks, I'm gonna just slide it on there. So I've got a toothpick on one side, a toothpick on the other. When you're using scrapbook paper, a nice thing to do, start rolling, give it a little roll, and then unroll it again. Just loosen that paper up a bit. Scrapbook paper is extremely thick. So just to make it easier to roll. So I'm going to put that in there, and I'm going to just start to roll. Now, if I want to, I could put a little bit of glue there to keep, to keep myself going. I don't have to, but you could take, you could take your glue stick, especially if you're, you know, just sitting at the TV, put a little bit of glue right down on there up above. You don't want to glue right at the end here because if you do that, you're not going to be able to pull whatever you're using to roll your beads with. You're not going to be able to, to pull that out. So you want to go up, you want to roll a little bit and then glue. So when rolling this, I want to keep, you're going to see that this tapers down to a point. I want to keep that in the middle. So I'm not going to line up my edges. I'm going to keep them going straight. But I'm really concerned about the paper staying in the middle. So we're just rolling. I'm using my finger and my thumb to really just kind of push it around. Helping to roll it down. Keeping this in the middle. When I get to about this long, this is where I'm going to take my brush 
dip it in my Mod Podge. I like to use the Mod Podge for this. If you're sitting on the couch, you can use your glue stick, but if you're sitting at, a, at a, an area where you can use the Mod Podge, if you cover that with Mod Podge, and then continue rolling, pushing with your finger as you go, and you're going to get Mod Podge on your finger, but that helps really seal the bead, and I like to go around a little bit. I'm gonna take it off my tool so you can see the difference of, see how flattened that is versus how round that is? And this is actually, you know, that's a cool kind of bead in itself if you want it flat. If you don't want it flat, just squeeze it around a little bit and it comes back to being round. But you can see when you have patterns, you can see the little lines that it gives all the way through. And you can see that it's wider in the middle and narrower down on the side. So this just gives you a really, a really nice shaped bead. I'm not going to take the time to Mod Podge this but we'll we'll show that at the end but i can just put it on because i hadn't glued it yet it is a little loose so you can see that i just pushed it back into place you can put it on there twirl it as you're using your paintbrush to put your mod podge on but for right now i don't want to do that so that is a bicone bead now we're going to make a cone bead. You can take the same triangular piece. You don't have to cut it specifically. So you can use that same kind of triangular piece, but you can see it's, it's not a perfect triangle. Like I could cut this straight across the edge to really be even, because if you look at it, it's basically a straight edge it's a right angle, so a straight edge with a with a side. But if you turn it a little bit, and then I don't have to cut that. I could if I really, really wanted to. But when I put this in, in my bead roller, I just made this straight, and I had a little bit more on this side than I did on this side. And you really don't see it as you're going. But for a cone bead, I want... A straight edge so I want one side to be a straight edge and I want the other side to to be cornered in so I am going to put this back into my my little bead tool in fact this one I'll use a straw so I can show you how that works these are nice thin straw so I'm gonna put this on my straw I'm gonna start it I'm gonna just roll a little bit unroll it just to make it a little easier for myself I'm gonna put Put it back in. Now, as I roll this, I want to keep my right side even. I don't care what this side is doing. I'm really only concerned about keeping that completely lined up. So I'm going to start rolling, keeping it straight. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on it. keeping this edge lined up. And you can see, I don't really care. This is making more of a beveled edge on this side. This side I want to keep straight. So as I roll, I'm really concentrating all my view right there. I can push that in as I go to make sure that it's straight. I'm going to keep rolling, keeping that edge straight. I can push as I go to make sure I'm lined up. You can see a nice straight line, keeping it going. Like I said, when you get about two or three inches to the end, take your glue stick 
or your Mod Podge. Get your glue on there. I'm putting that back into the water so it doesn't dry up. Because I moved it a little bit, you can straighten it out, keeping it tight. And I'm now going to just keep kind of rolling and pushing this, keeping that edge straight to the bottom, rolling it around, taking the excess off my fingers, still rolling it around. Taking that off, you can see I have a nice big round hole and I have a flat base, but it's pointed. If I want even more of a point, because I did not seal this right away, I can bring this up. I can just gently pull. I'm holding on to it. I can also take a pencil and push into the edge, bringing it down. And look at how much taller I've made that. So that's a neat cone bead. You can see you could you could like even flatten that down a little bit more if you wanted that. Or when you're ready to whatever you're going to do, make sure you string whatever wire or cord or whatever you have there. If you've got a lot left over, just pinch it closed around it, whatever you want to do with that. But that's your cone bead. So your cone and your bicone can be used with the exact same pieces of paper. And you get two different looks. So that's a lot of fun. So we've got, I'm just gonna put these up here so I know where they are. There's a cone and there's the bicone. So now we're gonna use, we're gonna make a three cube bead. I've already cut my paper out. This is a very strange one. This is the one that looks like a tuning fork. Um, to make it easier for myself, I just I just measured, did the width of my did the width of my ruler, cut my strip out, and then I really didn't care. I didn't measure all that closely. I just cut little sections out. So if you do want to do, you know, if you're great with your rulers and you really want to, to measure it out, you know, have equal, I'm going to just follow that all the way down there, have equal parts here, here, and here, cut out your little middle. However long you go from the top to the bottom, that's how wide your base bead will be. So if you want just a really small base, but then much bigger cubes, go down, go up higher. If you don't want as much of, of your cubes up, and then like my example is, let's cut this a little bit more. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just follow this up. I'm gonna go up a little bit more, cutting out, cutting out a little strip. So my inner bead, my barrel bead, will not be all that wide. So I went, I went a little bit higher. So like I said, you really don't have to worry about unless you really are precise. And if you are a very specific, precise person, then measure it out with, with your rulers. Get get the exact measurements in between take your inch do a quarter take a little eighth or whatever out get them all get them all even but if you don't care just kind of cut it so now we're going to start to roll this one i like the little tool that i use even though it makes somewhat of a flat bead so i'm going to just keep using that just for ease so i'm going to put whatever i'm rolling it on Put it at the bottom, start to roll, keeping both sides even. So you just keep rolling. I'm gonna put some glue down.
You can also, if it's hard, I'm trying to roll, I'm trying to roll up high so you can see what I'm doing, but sometimes it is much easier to roll on a hard surface because then you've got the table that is actually helping you. But I'm going to keep it up in the air to, to help you see. So when you get up here, I would put another bit of glue. Come up here. Now, we're only going to worry about one strip at a time. It would be way too hard to try to roll all of these floppy strips. So let's start with the right side. I'm going to put a little bit more glue there. And I'm going to keep this going right to the edge. So now I'm really only concerned about this edge right here. I'm going to just keep not really worrying those. They're rolling with me, but I'm not really worrying about them. I'm keeping this edge straight. I'm rolling. I'm going to roll all the way down. If they're in your way, just kind of let them unroll a little bit. This is the most fiddly bead that you're going to have. I'm going to put some glue on there. Another good trick is, uh, even though I have my surface protected, Having a piece of wax paper is great because then you can just put your glue on and you don't have to worry about getting your surface all yucky. So I'm going to just keep rolling to there. Now, like I said, I have to unroll a little bit just because those were in my way. Let's do the middle bead. Again, do not try to do these at the same time it is really hard. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to keep rolling as I'm going. Getting this one out of the way. I personally don't like this this particular one this much. It's a little fiddly. And it just really doesn't do much for me. <laughs> that's down. That's down. Now I'm going to do the end. Come back out. Put some glue. Now I'm going to keep this end tight. And I'm rolling. Keeping it going. Setting it down. Putting some glue. And rolling it down. I'm going to pull off my tool because I was using the flat one. It's not round, so I'm just going to squish it out a bit. So you can see there is your three cubed bead. So you have a bead, a little bit of an indent, a bead, a little bit of an indent, and your last bead. That just moved over a little bit because I haven't glued, I haven't glued them yet. So this one's this one's a little flexible on me, but you can see you can see the three separations. So that is your three cube bead. Your next one is going to be your bow tie or your peanut bead. So for that, I need a strip of paper, but I need. I need to make it look almost like a flag, like the old flags. I need, a, I need a triangle coming out in the middle. So I'm just gonna take my one inch strip and I'm gonna decide where do I want, how, how much bead do I want before, you know, how, 
the middle. How big do I want that? I don't want that very big. I want my sides bigger. So this is a, how big is this? This is a 12 inch strip. So let's go, let's go half. I'm going to go up to, I'm going to go up to the six. Again, no measurements. It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to, let's turn it over so we can mark it up and not worry about it. Actually, I'm going to go down, let's go down to the, let's go down to the five. Let's make it even thinner. So I'm just going to draw, I'm going to draw a little line right there in the middle. So now I have a base of which, that's an inch. This is where the measurements kind of come into play. That's an inch, so I am going to make a little line right in the middle. So I know that's the middle of, of my paper. So I'm gonna go from the middle to that corner, and then from the middle to that corner. I'm making kind of an upside down triangle. So I'm going from the middle right there to the tip, draw my line, and I'm going to go from the middle to the other tip, I'm going to draw my line, and now you can see I have a triangle drawn. So I went from the middle all the way to the one tip, from the middle all the way to the other tip, and where I based my line down was how thick I wanted my bead to be before I started to get points on it. So now I'm going to cut this out, and the nice thing with this is now you already have a pre-cut triangle for another bead. And nothing goes to waste. So because it's a smaller piece of paper, it'll be a thinner bead, but you've got a perfect triangle to make a uh, bicone bead out of. So that is what my paper looks like. I'm going to take my tool, put it in, start rolling. Let me show you too, since I've been doing so many different ones. Let's show a paintbrush. Let's do this one on a paintbrush. So paintbrush, knitting needle, any of those will work. Anything that you want to roll it on. So I can start with that and start rolling. I want to keep my edges even. I'm rolling pretty tight. I'm gonna set it down, put some glue on it. And then I can roll it even right on the table. This is how you'd roll using the table. Keeping it together, <laughs> rolling it in my glue. <laughs> but you can see rolling up. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I've gotten here to the edge. We're going to put some glue on. And I'm going to worry about just one. Just one of the, I'm going to unroll this a little bit because it got a bit too thick. Actually, I'm going to go all the way back because I lifted it up. And it got a bit it got a bit loose. Some people will will glue all the way through so that doesn't happen, but it's really not a big deal. Most people aren't picking their beads up as they go. So so we're gonna we're gonna line this up completely. I'm gonna keep turning it, but I'm gonna keep this right side right side edge going. Keeping it straight, keeping it tight, keeping everything right on the edge. Let's get some glue, some Mod Podge. 
So I'm going to keep that right on the edge. I'm going to use my finger to spread it out, keeping it on the edge. Spread the rest of that glue all the way around. Now we're going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to keep it, turn around and keep it straight on this edge. It doesn't really matter which way, which way you roll it, whatever's easier for you. Roll it towards you, away from you. But for this one again, I'm keeping this edge completely straight. Getting close to the edge. Putting on my Mod Podge. Smoothing it around. Continuing it all the way around, just following my glue down. There. So this, you can see perfectly straight edges here, and it goes down into the middle, so it looks like a bow tie. So you've got going down, going down into a bow tie, straight edges on the side. If we wanted to turn this into an hourglass bead, it's basically the same paper cut. So let's take another, I have another inch strip. I'm gonna flip it over on the side and do the same thing. I'm going to come, I'm gonna go, now let me show you, I'll show you the difference. Let's let's go down even smaller. Let's bring this down to a two and I'll show you the difference. So we're gonna draw a line around two. I'm going to draw a line directly in the middle, but I want for an hourglass, I would like it to have more of a, of a barrel in the middle. I want more points on the outside. See how you have, just barely have this middle section. So it goes down, down, and there's barely in both. I want to emphasize this, the middle section. So I'm going to bring that over. So I'm going to go quarter inch quarter inch So I'm going to go quarter inch on one side and a quarter inch on the other. So I'm going to have this nice wide I'll draw another line there to show you where I'm connecting them. I'm going to have the bead actually be this wide in the middle, and there'll be smaller points here. So I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to go from this little quarter inch to the edge, this quarter inch line to the edge. And again, any measurements you want, I'm just using these as a basic measurement you can do whatever size beads that you want to do the idea is still the same but i'm going to go from the edge of this quarter inch make my triangle go from the very corner of this piece of paper here to the quarter inch there so now you can see with this one, I have my corner pieces, but I have, instead of coming to a point like the other one did and made a, um, made a triangle, it has a straight line across. So we're gonna cut that out. And again, keep this piece because that can be rolled up for a bead as well. 
Again, right now we're making the hourglass or the barbell. So I'm going to come down and go all the way down to my two inch space like I originally had. I'm cutting this part out. Out, just following my line, cutting straight across. So this one, you have more of a straight piece, but save this because that can be rolled into a bead. So for this one, this one almost looks like an elongated table. There, straight across this time, instead of being a point, and then points to the bottom. So this is this bead right here, and that's going to become your hourglass. So again, you're gonna take whatever you're gonna roll it on, start it, give it a good roll just to get it going, undo it, just to loosen that paper up. If you're using magazines, or copy paper, you don't have to do this because they roll up really nicely. So I'm gonna start rolling, put some glue. I wanna go a little smaller, so I'm gonna go back to my paintbrush. So it's not such a big hole. I'm sticking to my wax paper here. So here we're gonna just start rolling up so I've created a barrel so there's my base barrel now I'm not gonna worry about this one let's do the right hand side first put some glue for this one I want to do this ex instead of doing it straight like we did the um, cone bead where we kept a straight edge this one I do want to do the bicone part of it so we're not gonna keep this edge straight. We're gonna just keep this whole strip in the middle. So as we roll, we're gonna just make sure that that stays right in the middle at all times. And that's gonna give me a bicone bead. These roll up must much faster, but I'm I'm working at an angle so you folks can see this. But you can see I'm getting I'm getting a bicone. I'm just continuing going around in a circle. I'm towards my end, so I'm going to get my glue. Continue keeping it in the middle. Continue moving it around. Finishing it up. So now you can see with the glue stick, that's why I do kind of like the Mod Podge glue stick doesn't hold as well with the scrap paper. So you just got to move it around a few more times. But that gave me, see how that wants to pop back up. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of the Mod Podge. I just find the Mod, the Mod Podge really does catch it better. If you're using just the glue stick, really put a lot of glue on there and roll it around so you can see there's a bicone. It's not straight at the end, it angles in. So we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue I've got a bunch on my wax paper, so I'm just gonna use that. All right, so I'm gonna start rolling, keeping this as I roll, keeping this in the middle, making another bicone, using my fingers to help guide it. Rolling it up, coming down to my end, getting some of my Mod Podge, 
Mod Podge in the end. Continuing it through. Smoothing out the excess Mod Podge around. I'm going to add some to the middle there because I've got a lot on my fingers. So I'm going to add that, make sure it goes tight there. So here is your hourglass or your barbell. You can see, I'm going to put this on my stick as well. You can see the difference between the two. Basically, almost the same paper cut that you used, but different results. This one had a much thicker center, and because I kept it straight on the edges, it goes down into a bow tie. This one, a much thinner center, and a bicone on this side, and a bicone on that side. So those are the two that are very similar, the bow tie and the hourglass. Very different results, but great looking beads. I'm going to show you now a ripped edge bead. And this is kind of a really cool, different looking bead. It is best used with a darker paper. It just really tends to show this, the separation between the layers better. So you want to take, I want it to probably be, you know, still about my inch. So I'm just going to take it. And I'm gonna tear, I'm gonna tear my paper down. And I like the way this looks better, so I'm gonna use this side. Now I want a torn edge on one side, but I want it straight on the other. So I'm just gonna eyeball this, I'm not gonna measure it. I'm just gonna eyeball it and I'm gonna cut a relatively straight edge down. So now I have this really cool dark piece of paper with a ripped edge. The best thing to do with a ripped edge is take a marker. I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use a gold, metallic gold coppery colored marker. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to take my edge now because I really want to highlight that. You can use a coordinating color too if you want. So I'm just going to take the side of my marker and just kind of follow along here around this ripped edge. I'm just highlighting the edge just ever so slightly. It's not a lot. It's just very slight. A little bit here on the sides. Just making sure you see a little bit of it because what this is going to do is um, it's going to really highlight that torn edge. If you don't, you don't really see the edge as much. So I'm going to continue that down. I don't want to go too deep because then all you'll see is a gold line, copper line. So I'm just going to go a little bit through there. So now I've got, as you can see, I've just got a very, very thin edge on that. With the other strip of paper that I had torn, it's more torn on that side, but if I wanted to make another bead out of this, when you tear, just kind of tear as you go. And you, if you didn't tear it nicely the first time, you can just take little pieces and tear. It's a little messy but you could just keep going and you could make a nice torn edge with that one. So it doesn't really matter which way that I start. This is, has a little wider white, so I think I'm gonna just start on that end. I'm gonna come down. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna roll on my chopstick. With this one, I want to keep my straight edge. So I'm just going to start I'm just gonna start rolling and I'm going to keep this edge nice and neat. I'm gonna put some glue. So I'm just gonna worry about, I'm not gonna worry about this side, I'm just gonna worry about 
this edge, rolling it down using my fingers. I'm going to keep it down. If it gets away from me, I can push it. Keep rolling. If it gets away from you, just, you know, go back a little bit. Keep rolling. I'm going to put a little glue here at the end. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to really make sure that that's even there. Again, this glue just doesn't seem, it's an older glue stick. So I'm going to do a little bit of Mod Podge. It just seems like that's sticking better for me. So I'm just going to roll that around. Sometimes you have to keeping that ed bottom edge straight. I'm just going to keep smoothing it out. Holding it down a little bit just to make sure it's there. So now I'm going to slide this off my bead. What I want to do is I want to pull up. You can see that it was completely straight. And I was like, oh, that's kind of nice, but it doesn't look like much. But this is another one where you want to either pull it up a bit or take your pencil and move it around and arrange it a bit making it into a cone bead. And then you can really see how where I've highlighted the edges, it gives a nice look. You could keep it flat down if you just wanted it subtle. But again, if you want it to really highlight those, and that's why to be able to move these around at the end, that's why you don't Mod Podge as you go, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to, to spread that out but isn't that a neat looking bead so that gives you a cool bead the same idea would be with the piece of fabric with this torn edge you can see this very ripped piece of fabric that I have let's do that one you can see I'm gonna start it I want to slide this off easy, so I'm going to use my spoon. I'm going to start it, keeping my edge. Let's go the other way so I can keep my, I like keeping my straight edges on my, my left side. So I'm going to start here, bring it down, roll it up a bit. And with this one, I'm definitely going to use the Mod Podge. This is a much thicker glue that's going to keep it really, that's going to keep it really good for me. So I've just Mod Podged all around there and I'm going to keep my straight edge. I'm going to just keep rolling, smoothing out because it wants to, this is like, this was a salvage edge. So it wants to fold over on me. Again, I'm keeping, I'm not really worrying about what this side is doing. I'm just keeping my straight edge going here. I don't even know what the measurement was of this. This was just, this was just here. <laughs> I found it in my stash. So if I wanted a smaller bead, I could cut it. So I'm coming down to my end. I'm going to take my Mod Podge again. Get a good amount on there. Finish it up. Smooth it around. I'm going to pull it off. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take my pencil. I'm going to spread it out, bring it up some, turning it into a cone bead. And then look at how cool that looks with all the fringe 
I picture it hanging this way. Doesn't that look neat? You can fray your edges if you don't have a really cool frayed piece like I have, but isn't that neat? And then yes, you can either leave it straight or you could put a bit of Mod Podge in there as you go if you like the, the fuzziness of it. You can put a little bit of Mod Podge around it just to kind of tack it on down. But that's a neat thing. That's what a fabric bead looks like, the torn edge. The last bead that I have for you is the basic barrel bead, and that's a pretty common sense... That's a pretty common sense bead. That is just a straight bead. Let's use a piece of newspaper. Just, I don't even know what the dimensions are. It's just a piece, strip of newspaper that I cut. To do your barrel bead, you're just gonna start it here in the middle. Start rolling. I'm going to get some glue there. The nice, and I'm gonna keep both edges even. And I'm going to keep rolling, keeping them even. Rolling up. I'm going to keep doing it down here. I know it's a little harder to see, but the table is really giving, helping me keep this somewhat straight. Now, this piece of paper wasn't that straight the way I cut it, but, you know, I really don't care. Paper beads are extremely forgiving. I'm going to put some glue on. And there is a good basic barrel bead. <laughs> I'm going to pull this off. Maybe I had some glue on my stick. There we go. <laughs> now you can see I'm, I got a little misshapen. No worries. Set it down, push it down on a hard surface, move it around a little bit, and then I've gotten that nice and straight and flat again. So that is your basic barrel bead. If you wanted it to be perfect, you can see it's a little more bicony on that end. I can just cut that. So now I have a straight end there and a straight end there. The nice thing with these barrel beads are these make a great base. If you don't have a large sheet of paper, um, here's a smaller triangle. What I can do, I could use this as a base to create beads. I could put this piece of paper in the middle, roll that on down, my glue. So I could do that. I'm going to cut that edge too. Again, sometimes that glue just doesn't stick. So I'm going to go there. So that's a base. I can take another piece of paper. I'm going to take a piece of magazine. When you're looking to see what you want to cut out, keep in mind whatever your edge is, that's what your, that's what your bead is going to look like at the end. So maybe I like, maybe I like this blue a little bit. You can see it's got a torn edge and it kind of goes to a point. So I'm going to follow that along. I'm going to just cut, and I'm not going to worry about what it looks like. And I'm going to angle it a little bit. So now you can see I have a pointy strip that goes down. So maybe I want to go even more on top of this because it's the same kind of point. So I can just start rolling right on the top of this. This isn't going to give me a good example because it's so 
wide. So let me show you more what I mean. Let's make this even smaller. I'm going to make this, I'm just going to cut this basically right in half. So I could either roll, if I really want this middle part to be thick, I can start rolling right on top of where I left off. And I'm going to get even a thicker bicone because I'm going to just keep rolling in the middle. So you can really build up a lot of parts of your beads. If I don't like that, I can work on this end and do a bicone on this end with the speed and roll it around. And what I can even do, especially if you're using the magazines and the junk mail, I could build my base up to what I want it to be and then paint it. I'm, I'm really treating the paper just more as shape. So as I paint this, you're going to see all those different layers coming out. You can just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger with those. So that's how you can kind of build upon your beads, starting with a good base barrel. Or if I didn't, if I didn't want this other part, say I just wanted a smaller piece of paper, but I didn't have a lot of it and I wanted it to be a bicone, but I wanted it to be thicker, I could use this as my base and then you, you know that I didn't have to use that big of a piece of paper. So there's multiple things that you can do with that. The other bead, um, I don't think I'm going to show you how to make it because it's basically the same idea as what we were doing with all the other beads. I'm not going to take the time to show it. It's a saucer bead. That was that really flat one, the one that looks like this. You roll it exactly as you would roll a bicone bead, but you use a quarter inch piece of paper. So you really have to measure for that one. To make a good flat saucer bead, you really need to measure your paper and have those measurements be exact. And um, like if you use, say you use, you, you could use an inch, and then if you wanted it even think thicker, take a half an inch piece and start rolling again on the top. And the more you roll together, the flatter your bead is going to be. What I would like to show you right now though is the pillow bead. And we're gonna do that with some really strong contrasting paper so you can really see the difference. So I'm gonna use the black one that I had already had, and let's take, I'm going to take, I'm going to take a pink piece of paper. I think black and pink will look good. What you can also do is if you've already cut your paper out and you really want to make sure that you have, you're going to a different paper and you want to have it be pretty even, just trace it. So I'm gonna just, instead of taking the time to do an inch, I'm gonna just trace that on down, roughly, you can see it was quick. So roughly it's about the same size. Cut my line. All right, so I now have two contrasting same size pieces of paper. To me, the pillow bead really looks the best when you do contrasting papers, but um, you could use the same paper with that, though, you just want to really pay attention to what you're doing 
as you go along. So with, with a pillow bead, I kind of drew a little diagram here. You're going to start with face down one piece of paper going that way your other piece of paper going down. So you have one going this way, you have one coming down. Move all the stuff out of the way. So you have one and two. Because, remember when we're cutting them, they're not exactly the straight. So you just, you're gonna have a little overlay there and a little overlay there. It's all right but you want to line them up together. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my two edges and bringing them up like that. So I've got this one on the top, that one on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one, I'm going to fold this going that way I'm going to fold this one, I'm not gluing anything down, I'm going to fold this one going up and crease it. So you can see I've got one down, one on top, one goes over, one goes up. So now it looks like an L. I'm going to flip this down, bring it right down like that. This is the last one that I used. So I'm gonna bring this one up. I'm gonna bring this one over and make my nice creases. I'm going to bring it down. This is the last one I used. This one will always go left to right. This one is always going to go up and down. So I'm going to go, you're always gonna to wanna to use opposites. So I'm going to go that way. I'm going to bring that one up. Flip it down. I'm going to bring this one up, this one over, flip it down, over, up, flip it down, up, and over, flip it down over, up, flip it down, up, over, keeping that in the middle, flip it down, over, keep that in the middle, up, Flip it down, and now is where I need my glue. So I'm going to take my Mod Podge, put some glue there, some glue there, some glue there. This one, I'm going to bring this up, smooth it on down, bring this final piece over. And I just want to smear that all over. I really want those edges to stay down. And you get this neat, you can really see with the different color papers. And I did that kind of fast and I wasn't as precise as I could have been. So the more precise you are, the more your layers are going to show. And then, as I said, it was a pillow bead. Normally, you're going to let this dry, but for the sake of airtime, I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to just push it. Push it together. Use the table a little bit as 
leverage to push it down, push it down, pushing it down. Just it's a nice, it's a nice thick bead. Just use your fingers to really push it and move it, and it becomes a pillow. That was from something from the table, so I'll take that piece off. But isn't that neat? And then it has um, the hole here and the hole here, so you can string your wire going through this way or that way. Now, the warning with this one is the smaller the piece of paper, the harder it is to, to open this up. So this was an inch. An inch is a really great one to work with. And like I said, you can kind of see that there's the hole in the middle. So I could string that through and go all the way out the other end. And that's a neat bead to use. You could also glue a bale at the top if you wanted to hang it that way. Um, take your wire, you can make a bale, glue it to the back and you could hang it that way. You could use a paper clip, cut that off, hang that. Um, but the smaller your paper, the harder it is to really puff it up. This is an inch. You could do a half an inch or you could do a quarter inch. You're not going to be able to go any smaller than a quarter inch. It just will not fold. There'll be too many pieces of paper to fold together. But that's that's a cool extra, cool extra bead to play with with some contrasting paper. Showing now how to coat your beads when we're all finished. I'm going to take our cone bead. I'm going to put it on to my chopstick. I really like using the chopsticks. I'm going to take my paintbrush with my Mod Podge. Kind of the best way to start. Take your Mod Podge and brush it straight across. Just giving it a nice coat all the way down. Dip in as you have to. Just kind of starting it going up and down not really caring what it looks like. Now for the fine part of it, you're gonna take your brush. Now you wanna go around in a circle. Going around in a circle like this really smooths out the Mod Podge. It gets in, in all the nooks and crannies and it gives a nice layer so you don't have clumps. You really wanna make sure that your Mod Podge is smoothed out. You can see I just keep spinning, turning. If I see a big clump, I go over that, keep going down, all the way, making sure I get all the way to the edge. Just wanna really make sure you've got it all covered. Now, the thing with Mod Podge is you want to do multiple layers. Make sure that's all smooth. You can see I've got it all the way around, really smooth. The little dots that you're seeing, those are the polka dots in the paper. <laughs> but you can see it's all smooth around. I'm going to then just pop that off my chopstick. I'm going to put it onto my toothpick holder that I'm using to dry things. I'm going to go to my next bead. You, as I said, you really want to make sure you're putting on a thin layer to start with and doing multiple layers. Don't put like five coats on all at once. Put a coat on, get a really good coat going, let it dry for a day. Give it a give it a good 24 hours or as close to that as you can. Give it a really good day to get all nice and hard um, and a good solid coat. Then go back and do another one. Depending on how hard you want your bead to be is how many, you can put two, three, four coats on if you want. 
Um, I usually do two. I think that's hard enough for me. You do want to coat your beads, though, because remember, this is paper. And what happens when we get paper wet? It disintegrates. So if you were not to cover these, if you got these wet, it's, it's going to fall apart. You know, they're not waterproof, but they're water resistant after you after you coat it. With these barrel beads, you can see there's a little bit of a um, the line there. I want to really make sure I get that. You can see the coating in that line right there. I really want to make sure I get that there. I can even take my finger and really push down, push it around to make sure that my edge is down. Use your fingernail. I just really want to make sure that edge is, is down. And then when I'm putting it on, I want to go in the direction that I rolled it because otherwise you're going to keep lifting that edge up every time you go around. So that helps to hold it down. So again, I don't put too much on. Don't go over your your ends too much because you know you have to be able to get something to go through it if you want to hang them so then I can take that off put that on my tooth toothpick um so any any of these like I said a chopstick is really great to be able to use you just kind of stick it on there it gives a nice way to to roll it Again, rolling it all the way down. If it's moved, you've got, before you coat it, you've got the chance to get it into position of where you want it. And then get your, because once you put your first layer of Mod Podge down, you're not moving it after that. So you get it on there nice and smooth. Make sure you get in all the nooks and crannies. Let it dry for 24 hours. If you can, or at least at least eight, get a good solid seal with that one and then put another coat on. And then after that, decide what you want to do. And again, as I said, if you want to add glitter, um, you can put glitter on this and then put another coat over it. You can take uh, Sharpies or paints, paint your beads, and then put a coat on. I personally would would... Do it first, put another coat on. I mean, put the coat on, do whatever you want with paints and markers, then put another coat on. You can do it straight to it, though, without without putting the Mod Podge on. That works especially great with, like, the newspapers. Like, if you use, if you use the newspaper beads... That's got a coat. I could take a I could take a permanent marker and and go on there with the newspaper. If I coat it first and then put my my marker on, it won't soak in as much because uh, newspaper is very porous. So doing your one coat gives you a, a smoother surface to be able to color on. But other beads like this like the scrapbook paper. I could, I could instantly, if I wanted to highlight some of those lines, I could take my Sharpie, go around it, you know, start. There's really no, no wrong way to do this. You just want to get a nice, even coat um, as, as you're going through, smoothing it out, keeping it even, getting, making sure you get all of your parts covered. Smooth it out with your fingers if you want, if you don't want to use the brush. Now my Mod Podge was sitting for a little bit. It's a little clumpy. So I am going to take my finger and just kind of smooth it out, making sure I don't have any of the clumps that I'm seeing on my brush right here. So getting it in there, making sure, like especially with the ones that have the rolled edges that you can see all the layers, you just really want to make sure that those are all covered. Take your time, spin it, and just again see how there was a big clump right there. I didn't wanna I didn't want to leave that super clumpy like that. I would not want to leave 
I would not want to leave a clump like that because it'll dry that way. If you want to add texture to your beads, go ahead. But if you want a nice, smooth, shiny bead, like I said, don't hesitate to take your finger too once you've done it. Take your finger, smooth it all out, make sure it's all there. And that is how the best way to Mod Podge your beads. Same thing with the fabric. You know, I can keep, I can keep that. You can still put Mod Podge right on that. Put it in there. Press it down. Make sure it's gonna. So that's gonna make it hard. Now with this one with the fringe, I don't think that I would go. I'm gonna do just the base here to give it a nice hard base. I don't think I'm gonna go anywhere in on that. It's gonna stay, especially when I put it, use it as a necklace, that's gonna stay. So I'm not gonna ruin that fringe. I don't need to do that. So that is how, just let them sit there, let them be, and then come back, do another, do another layer. So that is how you gloss them. And again, rinse your, rinse your brushes right away. If you have a lot of Mod Podge left, pour it back in the container. Um, if you're going to do this and you're not going to be able to get to it right away, there are little containers for this, but it's not that airtight. It's not going to last forever. But take a piece of plastic wrap, push it all the way down on there and wrap it around and then put that in a plastic baggie. That should keep it pretty safe because you just want the air to stay away from it. I hope you had fun. I hope uh, this inspired you to do some different things. If you don't want to wear jewelry, turn them into mobiles. You can hang them from sticks or dowels. You can turn them into bookmarks. Uh, put a string through one end, pull it up, put another string at the other end through another bead, and you've got a really great bookmark. You could turn them into tassels, um, just things to hang. So all sorts of different things that you can do with these. Um, the internet has on YouTube ton and ton of different videos out there of all the different styles of the beads. Um, they even have beading cores if you want to make them like the uh, Pandora beads, the really big beads. There's little cores that you can get and you can wrap them around that and then they have nice little eyelet on the ends to finish up your beads. You can also buy eyelets to put in there to finish up your beads. But uh, lots of different uses, a lot of fun to do. Um, very messy project. You're going to have glue all over, but easy cleanup and lots of fun. So hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you next time.